Children love to read. They immediately develop a system. If you interrupt that process, what you will do is shut the child down. The child will often only read when forced to read. You will get children who say, how many sentences do I have to write? So it's important that we as teachers know all of the techniques and then get to know each of our children well enough to know which technique works best for each child. Children who learn free of stress are most likely to be the children who create those really wonderful sources of literature for the future. Children very quickly develop elaborate stories and children who have stories to tell have stories to write. Here it says this is a T-Rex. What's a T-Rex? It has teeth mm -hmm. and it has feet mm -hmm. and it has a tail. It has a tail. And, and it has a big rock. Can you do that big rock? Once they have that communication skill, then they know how to put it down on paper. A scary bat. bat. But what else makes him so scary? It spreads fire. So that's how the writing process begins. One winter night, I went camping. I saw Bigfoot. Bigfoot stole my presents. A tube. You might take a tube when you're on your boat. So this would be something you'd carry on your boat. Layla? In the morning, each child has a turn to come up with words that they associate with the original word. For example, today we had boat. You ride on it. Go fast. Race and boat. So they're able to come up with ideas many different ways just by having done this every day. We pair up our senior kindergarten students with second grade reading buddies. It helps them to have confidence in their reading and it shows the kindergartner that they're well on their way to becoming a fluent reader themselves. It was cold outside. It was warm inside. A fine day for gingerbread. Maddie took down a worn looking cookbook. Worn looking? What in the world is worn looking? A lot of our read aloud time is focused on comprehension. So now he's like a baby. So it's a constant kind of a discussion. The children read silently when they get to be the teacher, and of course everybody wants to be the teacher. They take their little card and they put it on the teacher side, and then I get to play the role of the student. I want to know why. Oh. The reason that we all read is to understand something. So developing the critical thinking, that's all comprehension. Does anybody know what color crimson is? Children need a really wide range of vocabulary and they gather this vocabulary from the experiences that they enjoy. Who has a C word? I do! I do! I do! I do! I do. It's important that we capture the vocabulary from the children. It's much broader than any commercial program could ever provide and truly influences how deeply they can learn. Cheetah, psycho, cat, chocolate, cow, chihuahua, celebration. Inventive spelling is absolutely developmentally appropriate. The words are spelled phonetically. So if you were going to spell water, it may be W-O-T-R. Some children will only write what they can spell, in which case 
you could say, well, the child has learned to spell correctly, but indeed the child may not be embellishing their writing because they don't know how to spell words. And if you tell them, oh, that's spelled wrong, they're going to stop and they're going to want everything to be spelled perfectly. They're going to forget what they were thinking about and their thoughts won't be complete. It's more important that they have a complete thought. When a child first started talking, you didn't constantly correct them and say, that is not how you say daddy. You cheered them on. It's not enough just to write a piece and walk away from it. The final step is presentation. You're really honoring that child's work. You're saying, you know, what you're doing is amazing. If you made this amazing story, you need to start sharing it with the world. And it can be a fancy book. We do hardbound books where we send them out to an actual publisher. Wow, this is like a real book. So later on in their life, it's the kind of letter writing, the kind of journal writing, the kind of documents that they're producing. Those are the kinds of children that we're interested in raising at Miami Country Day School. I'm in fourth grade, and my poem is called I Am From. I am from a never-ending blue calm sea, the warm sun and the water that mixes perfectly into place, my toes digging under the sand, feeling the bits of tiny rocks in the cracks. I am from a soft, warm bed, a sunny garden with dark green leaves and tall trees. I am from a desk where all my thoughts spread out onto paper with a dim light shining on it like the last bit of sun when it sets. I am from a growing city with lots of people, talking and laughing and texting and hailing taxis to leave for places to see friends and to meet. The most common question that I get asked by parents is, when is my child going to be able to read? I don't know because your child will be able to read at the moment they're ready to read. Years of support go into creating this moment where the stars align and like that. The next week they come in and they're, they're reading almost fluently, where all of a sudden it clicks. There is no one age for all children to learn to read, and we just have to be patient with them and not force them. I want them to love reading. And teaching a child how to read, it's very individualized. You really need to get to know the child, know what clicks with them, and try different approaches. And I think that would be the biggest difference between traditional teaching and what we're trying to do in our reading program. You see when the light goes on because their interest is there, so eventually the reading comes along. It just happens naturally because people want to communicate with each other. They'll look at me and say, wow, I didn't know I could do that. It will happen. In their own time, your child will read, and the most important thing to us is your child will read for joy. He fell in love with her. <laughs> A, B, C, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I.